Hey everyone, it's Lainey. Welcome back and welcome if you're new. This is officially the last Easter video of the season. Once more, bringing in Dollar Tree crafts and completely transforming them to make them the, your own for your home decor. So for the first project, it's going to be an iron-on. This wooden house here I found and it's already painted white and it has the little slats in it. I have this Cricut iron-on and I kind of cut it down because I wanted to have the slats exposed but I will do my best to link all the products down below if something is not there just give me a friendly reminder in the comment section and I'll do my best to get that for you so to begin I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my mini press and I'm gonna turn it on medium heat first I need to plug it in all right so let's try this again let's turning it on medium heat which is two wavy lines and let that warm up and let me bring in the other things that I'm kind of thinking of incorporating in this. So you can see that this is a pattern of green and you can position it, you know, vertically or horizontally. I wanted to do it horizontally because I wanted to bring in some rabbits. And this was a pack and they come with a little fluff ball on there for the tail. And I really like the other side too. You can compare them. A little more rustic looking. If you didn't like that side, you could always use the other side. And the bunny tail comes off super easily. So, what I was thinking was, you know, to iron this down, incorporate the bunny. And I'm not sure if I want just the natural wood side and maybe to glue the bunny tail on that way. Or just have it as so or to even bring in a color and color it. Okay, so my mini press is ready. And I'm gonna position this. I do have some excess. After it's all ironed down, I will bring in my true control knife, my X-Acto knife, and get to trimming. And I'm just monitoring this. Being very careful not to burn my fingers. Really getting the edge. Okay. And that is, seems to be adhered well. And let's just move on to the second piece. And I cut them apart and then did, you know, did a horrible job. So I'm just going to iron them down and then, you know, bring in the blade again to clean up everything. Uh-oh. I don't want those to overlap. Because it might be a little more difficult for me to cut, but it's too late. It kind of shifted. I am using quite a bit of pressure to make sure that this is adhering to the wood. And I have so much pattern vinyl for spring. I am so ready, I'm so excited. So definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos, especially if you're excited for spring season like I am. All right, so the last piece I'm thinking that I need to come in here that was the carrier sheet you know making some mistakes not really thinking this through 100% obviously but sometimes that happens I'm trying to peel this up while it's still warm there we go perfect Okay, lining up the last piece, starting in the middle, and then ironing that one half just a couple of times, and then repeating the process on the top. And don't forget to iron down the edges because you don't want any of those edges peeling up. Okay, so I'm going to move this aside as this cools down and bring in another iron on here while we have the mini press on. These are garden gloves that says one size fits all. 
and cut off the tag here. These would be great, maybe not from Dollar Tree if you've got a little one because these are, you know, for adults. But if you had a little helper, this would be such a cute Easter basket gift or even for your teenagers. Um, if they like helping you in the yard or if they're older and they, they just like to, you know, dabble with the plants, this is such a cute little gift for the Easter basket. So I've got these pretty floral gloves and I cut out my friend's name in the rose gold foil and I actually cut that out on my Cricut Maker, or I'm sorry, I cut it out on my Cricut Joy Extra and I actually cut it out on just the iron on, the glitter iron on and it cut perfectly. So what I'm going to do is line this up. I guess maybe I should prep the surface first, huh? Let me go ahead and get a clean sheet. All of this on here is burlap from my door hanger craft, which I'll link down below if you didn't see it already. It is such a cute craft for the spring season. So just taking the lint roller, doing a quick clean up there and now let's just bring in the mini press and apply just a little bit of heat and I am ironing on the cloth itself the glove part where your hand and your finger are it has that rubber protector the name kind of let's see I feel like the name kind of goes down onto part of the rubber just barely but there should not be a problem let me go ahead and should I kind of curve it I think so okay once more just coming in on medium heat and this should take about typical time 25 to 30 seconds I am just monitoring this of course this is such a thin material it's not going to take too much heat Okay. and yeah there's nothing wrong with the glove because of the R and the A kind of went into that rubber backing let me apply just a little more heat I can kind of see that some areas need a little more time okay so let's turn that over and let that cool down I'm going to keep my mini press on for the time being and let's go ahead and turn this over and yes, I'm cutting directly on my glass mat. And um, someone noted in a comment that, you know, cutting on my glass mat is probably dulling my blade a lot faster. And that makes complete sense. But I really like using the glass because it helps my blade just glide. Because if I'm using a self-healing mat, my blade doesn't glide as smooth. So it's just a personal preference. Okay, perfect. So now I'm thinking, should I remove the liner and and then cut down the slats or leave the liner and just do a cut? Because the liner is making this a bit thicker. Let's just kind of just see here. Just keeping my blade, or trying to keep my blade along the edge there so I can really get that gap. So you can kind of, you can already kind of see that gap and that's what I want. I just want this to be cleaner, but I'm trying to be careful to not have my blade slip. I don't want to cut myself and I don't want to cut the wrong part of the iron on. That's looking good. So good. Okay, so I haven't removed the liner yet, and I've kind of gotten into the slats a bit deep in some areas, but overall, I really like the look. So, 
Let's move that aside and bring in the glove again. I think I applied too much heat to some of it. Let's see. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my mini press off. And I applied a little too much heat to that part of the eye. But how cute is this? And like I said, perfect for the little helpers. And, you know, who doesn't like their name on something? I think that this is such a neat gift and project. So let's move this aside. Essentially, this is craft one. And now let's finish craft two. I'm going to bring in my weeding tool and remove the liner. Being very careful, you don't want to accidentally poke your weeding tool underneath the iron-on. You just want to remove that protective layer there okay oh it's so nice I love this how cute okay so now to try to clean up a little bit more inside I'm gonna bring in my tweezers and just kind of glide let me stand this up actually try to get that extra stuff just to kind of fall out yeah, and they both, well, yeah, they kind of both fit. If you close the tweezers, they fit in there. This is working perfect. Okay. So you can see all that debris falling out. So just stand it up so it can fall directly down. I'm going to need to clean up my desk. It is kind of a mess. Okay. And there you go. How nice is that? I love it. All right, so I brought out some jute twine, also from the Dollar Tree, and I have two of the rabbits, one with the original side, and then I just ripped off the bunny tail and flipped this over to, you know, compare because the color of the wood is very different. And before we move forward, I wanted to let you know that this iron-on is from the Bell Citron sampler. I recently purchased these two from um, Michaels. I know these are older products from Cricut, but these are new purchases to me. So just wanted to point that out to you guys. And so now what we've got here, I'm thinking about placing the bunny kind of more right justified but more, but having this slat here kind of more on the left side of the bunny. I don't want the bunny just all the way over like that. And I don't like the bunny ears centered with the slat. So that's why I have it shifted as I do. So that is with the, the natural color. And then this is the back side of the bunny. And up close, you can kind of see that you can kind of the chard from the laser cutting, I really like that. It does add some nice detail to the rabbit. Or do I want this color wood and then I can add the bunny tail on again. And I wanted to bring in the jute twine because I was thinking about wrapping this around a couple times and then tying a bow just to add a different texture to the project. So let me cut this apart. And make sure that it is tight and I'm gonna have it more towards the top. Try to tight a bow as tight as I can. Yeah. That is super cute. Making the loops kind of small. That is so cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trim these down. Do I want them, do I want it? Let me see, I don't quite know. Do I want a little bit of the tails? Yeah, that is perfect. All right, so this color does look good 
with the green. It looks really good, but I didn't do a good job of cutting it. I think I'm having a hard time because this wrap, these rabbits are a little too small for me to work with. But what I was trying to recreate was this craft that I did in a couple videos ago. I'll link it down below if you didn't catch it. But all of these rabbits here are just wooden rabbits from Hobby Lobby, and I applied a variety of pastel vinyls to them and just you know cut around. And I loved this project. This is one of my favorite things that I have created and I kind of wanted to do the same with these but it's just not working and since I want to use just only Dollar Tree items I'm just going to stick with the natural wood but I wanted to show you this if you didn't catch that video for further inspiration. Okay so now I think I'm just going to use the original side. It does, it's textured, it's a different color. You know, just making it a little bit more visually appealing because it has so many elements. And hot gluing that down. Alrighty. And stand it up to make sure that that's not going to mess with it standing. Perfect. All right, and there you have it, craft number two. Okay, before I turn my hot glue gun off, I want to complete this craft. This is a wooden bead ring. It says wood bead wreath, and I'm gonna cut the tag off. And bringing in these bunnies again, I'm going to use the more textured side to add some contrast because these beads are a lot lighter. We need a little darker color. So what I want to do is make sure that it is positioned correctly. I want this at the very top. And I'm gonna apply a little glue at the, on the bottom portion. And whatever doesn't touch the beads, it will just dry. But let's see here. Yeah, I think right here. You know what? And I didn't think this through because of the beads roll. Hmm. How are we going to get that to stay fixed? I wonder if I can try to apply some glue around the beads and the wire to kind of keep that still. Let me see how this was going to work. Yeah, I think that's going to work. I just applied a little hot glue inside that bead, letting that dry, and then those beads should be fixed. And then we'll just do that for each little area there. I need to do it to this one as well. Just apply a little glue inside so the bead and the metal ring can adhere together. Let's turn it over, make sure everything is positioned, and just hold this in place while it dries. All right, perfect. And I don't know, I think I want three bunnies. That's kind of what I was thinking originally. Okay, so doing the same thing, just going to apply the hot glue at the bottom of the rabbit. Position it. You know what, this one needs just a little more glue further up the rabbit, but that's okay. Any excess hot glue I can just cut off once everything dries. So just pressing that down while the bunny dries and then I may have to flip it over and apply some more glue to the beads because these are kind of shifting. Let me hold this up. Yeah. Okay, let's turn it over. Position our wreath as it's supposed to be and make sure our rabbit is straight and I'm just going to apply glue to this back side here so everything is fixed once again. 
Alrighty, and now for the last one. How do I want that? Do we only want two? I have to hold it up to see, or do I want this third one? I originally wanted the three. I think the third one is just kind of out of place. Yeah, I'm not gonna add the third one. Just these two. And if you wanted to add color to them, you definitely could. Take this and run with it in whatever direction that you want. But since this is all wood colors, let me actually bring in a colored ribbon. I pulled these two chiffon colors, but now that this is just such a natural wood look, we need some color. So let me pull some of the colors and see which one I like. All right, so I have this more vibrant pink, the pale pink, and then the blue. I think if we go with the brighter color, it's going to be a little too bright because there's no other color. So I don't want this to be the main focus. So I'm going to move those aside. I think I'm going to, oh, let's do the blue. So I just have this tied in a knot. These are from Hobby Lobby. They are the paper studio and they come in a two pack and they are where the scrapbooking things are in Hobby Lobby. They're not where the ribbon is. Let me cut this little knot off there. And the only thing that I wanna do is just kinda of make a bow to one, cover up the metal, and two, to make a hanger. So I don't quite know, do I want it a bow or do I just want kinda of like a loop? Okay, so I was originally gonna tie a bow and then I just was playing with the ribbon and I think I'm just going to have it kind of like this. Let's see. It'll just have like a hoop like this. So make that as long as you want. And now I've got the tails overlapping and I'm just gonna take my hot glue gun and go over the beads and the metal piece. Okay, and then fold the chiffon ribbon right on top of that. And what I need to do now is cut off the tails. And this is just the excess that's not attached by the glue. Okay. And there you have it. So I have the loop and it will hang just like so. And okay, final result. I decided to do both. So what I did was just with the excess chiffon ribbon, I just tied a bow and hot glued it to the strap. So it will hang. Let me try to position this in the camera so you can get the full effect. So it will hang just like this. And it has the cute little bow with the shorter tail so it doesn't take away from the rest of the details. And then we have the two little Easter rabbits right there. All right, guys, this is craft number three. I really like how it turned out. I had no idea what direction I was going with this, but adding the little bow right there was the perfect touch. So let's move this aside and bring in a vinyl craft. Okay, for this final craft, I have this tech wrap in green, and I found this design in Cricut Design Space. And I was just looking through their Easter stuff. I think I typed in Easter decor, no, Easter rectangle design, and found this. So we'll get this weeded out, and then I'll bring in the blank. And. I just thought this would pair super well together. And actually, the design in Design Space was green. Um, it was a darker green, but I love this color. I used it quite a bit during the fall season. So I thought, why not bring it out again? So what I need to do, let me get my ring weeder here. And just work kind of slow here. Uh-oh, see? 
I said let work slow and I almost made a boo-boo here. Alrighty. Alright, so I'm going to be careful with the other letters to make sure that middle piece doesn't pop up. But it says Happy Easter and this is definitely more of a little modern design. And this green was from a roll, but when I was dabbling into testing out different vinyls, what I did was order a variety pack first from TechRap. And I will link that down below if it's still available. And I want it all matte because, you know, typically vinyl is gloss. And I ordered that variety pack and I loved it. It is a thinner vinyl but it cuts great, no problem. And it weeds really easily. And I really like it that it is not that thick of a vinyl, but I honestly have not had one issue with it. And I have been using it for months. And I'm truly obsessed with this product. I wish that I had tried it out sooner. I watched Kayla's um, Cricut Creations, I believe that's her name. I watch her occasionally and she was always, I actually watch more of her shorts, um, and she was always using Tech Wrap. And so I finally was like, you know what? I need to give that a go. I need to try that out. And the best way to try something out is just to order, you know, a sample pack, kind of like I did, and I am hooked. All right, so bringing in the blank here, this is from Dollar Tree Plus section. It was $3. I purchased this during the fall and it had some kind of fall sentiment on it. I just taped it off and painted two layers of chalk paint on it. And I kept the bead detailing accent and it also comes with this little hanger as well if you wanted to utilize that to hang it up. But this is now the look that I'm going for and then I thought that this color green would pair great with the white and also the natural wood so I don't have any paper transfer tape the only transfer tape that I have oh goodness is my high tack so what I want to do is be very careful because I don't want to disturb the paint when I'm removing the transfer tape. But first off, lining this up and I'm gonna trim the transfer tape down to size. And bringing in my weeding tool to pick up the corner. Whoop. Okay. All right, folding my transfer tape and gonna place it right down in the center got a little bit of that greenery exposed but I think that that was a pretty straight application so I'm going to bring in my scraper and just burnish really well on the front and the back Woo! some of the areas just need a little bit of help Could have burnished down a little more, but alrighty. Okay, very carefully holding it and bringing in my blank, and I'm going to make sure that I am sitting straight and the blank is straight as possible. And what I want to do is try to position it the best that I can in the center of the white. So I wanted the top and the bottom and the sides to try to, you know, be as even as possible as I just, you know, eyeballed that. And I'm not applying a lot of pressure with my scraper. And I'm not doing that because of the transfer tape. So let's see how this is going to work. So it seems that the transfer tape is not pulling up any of that paint, but the vinyl does need a little more pressure. So I'm just going to work in sections. Oh, 
Uh oh. And just peeling it back super slow. Okay. The paint wasn't messed up. This is definitely trash because it does have some residue on it. I love this. I love how it is so soft in nature and the natural wood along with the white. Look at that pairing. All right, guys, we've got a couple more crafts left. I'm going to move this aside and bring in the next one. But I just love this. I think this one is my favorite. Okay, so I have this candle. It's just the plain white, obviously from Dollar Tree. I thought that this would be perfect to light on Easter or the night before Easter or Easter night. Once again, I found this in Design Space. I'm gonna be very careful here. And you know, these candles aren't scented, but that doesn't mean that it's a waste. I love candles. I obviously love the smell, but I like the look too. So you could have this going just for the aesthetic and then have your smell good candles going as well. And that's what I plan on doing for this holiday. And it's got some text here. And I'm gonna be very careful. I think I just typed in, well, you know what? I know that I found this in under the Easter, just typing in Easter in the search bar. And I found this and I just decided to cut it out in a matte black. So it really stands out on top of the white, but you could go in any direction. If you wanted to use pastels, you definitely could. Or even, you know, um, what it was designed as. I saw it two different ways. A blue and a green. It was really pretty. So I'm going to bring in this scrap piece of transfer tape. I've used it before. It's not very clean. But it shouldn't have a problem adhering to the candle because this is a glass. Let me cut the remainder off here so it doesn't interfere with the burnishing down and I'm gonna have to really burnish both sides quite a bit of pressure because this has already been used alrighty so I also have the jute twine that we used in the other craft and I know that I want to well I know that I wanted to add it but I don't know if I want to have a bow or I just kind of want it wrapped around a couple of times. Let me stand this up and play with this a little bit. Just wrapping it around. All right, I'm still wrapping this around and I just turned my hot glue gun back on. I think I'm just gonna wrap it around a few more times just so it has this jute twine accent up at the top. You could do this at the bottom as well if you didn't want it at the top. Okay. So I think that, that is where I want it. So I'm going to cut this. And what I did was cut it where it started. And what I'm going to do is just very, very carefully with a little bit of glue just add a little bit of glue at that end and try to get those glued together my hot glue gun is not quite warm enough yet so I'm gonna have to give that a little bit of time okay so as my hot glue gun is heating up let's go ahead and apply the vinyl just positioning the candle where the tag is in the back. It's got one little piece that needs a little help. Okay. And always clean your surface before you apply vinyl. And uh oh. I just kind of want it 
centered. You hold it up and see. Okay, so what I did, I'm just applying some pressure right there in the center. And then I'm going to just use my finger and apply a little more pressure to that to the left side. And once all that's stuck down, I'm going to do the same to the right. Okay. And then bring in my tool just to help lay that down. Okay, so let me turn this over and turning the jute twine to the back as well so that hot glue will be towards the back. Granted, there's not going to be too much to that's going to be shown, but I still want it in the back. So just a little glue in between those two layers there. And I mean just a little, little drop. Do the same up at the top. Perfect. And you can't even tell. Turn it around. And there is another craft that is a faith-based craft for Easter. Okay, this is the last craft. And once more, a faith-based craft and let me just cut this off as well and I've got this really pretty pale blue pulled and I cut out some text in white and what we're going to do is a little bit of what we've done in the beginning is apply the vinyl to the blank and if you have paint you could definitely use paint I don't have paint in this color, but I have vinyl in this color, so I'm going to use that. Just using what I have and really getting that pressed down so there's no bubbles. And once I feel like it's really adhered to that wooden cross, I'm going to turn it over and just trim around very carefully, trim around the cross. Okay, it seems to be pretty clean. Just double checking. And there you have it. And it's got the rounded edges. My True Control knife cut it out really, really well. I just typed this out in Design Space. I will do my best to remember the font and place that information down in the description box for you. And it says, He is Risen, which is a very traditional Easter decor item for this year, or this time of year. But, I really liked it. And you can use, you know, paint with this, patterned vinyl. You can go in so many different directions with the blank. I, if you didn't want any uh, phrase wording on it, you could always just use the vinyl and leave it as so. Uh-oh. Or poke the hole back in it and run the jute twine through. Alright, let's see how this adhered. That E. Uh-oh. That E was not wanting to lay down. Neither is the S. Let me bring in my scraper and add a little more pressure here. This is a thin font. And we got the little dot to the exclamation point. There we go to bring this in because I want to style it just on its side like this 
So let's see. We can position this. Sorry if my head's in the way. Okay, I think that's straight. Fingers crossed. Adding some pressure so that vinyl can adhere to that vinyl. And look at that. And it is that simple. I love those colors paired together and once again they are soft. Perfect for the season. And like I said, I'll just style it, you know, on its side like so. And I really like it. It's just a small, subtle touch of home decor. All right, everyone, this is the lineup. It turned out way better than I anticipated. I am so happy with these Dollar Tree crafts. We've got two faith-based crafts, and then the rest are your typical Easter spring related. I am loving the patterned vinyl and this matte green, just the matte vinyl in general. One of my favorites is this colorful glove with that rose gold foil iron on. You've got to give this a shot. It worked out so good. Such a good gift and for Easter baskets. And if you missed the last video, I will link it down below so you can see the lineup for these crafts as well. And that is it guys, the last video for Easter season. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.